What is the big picture message for all of us at this time? So many people are remembering why they're here and they're stepping into their purpose. People are coming back online to their souls and their memories. We are remembering that we chose to be here now. People are not able to stay out of alignment with their own vibration. This point in time, the mundane conversations bore us to pieces. When you raise your vibration, you, you tend to want to be with people of a similar vibration, if not higher. And so these, these are who I sleep with each night. That's unbelievable. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted closure or clarity or guidance from the other side, then do we have the Happy Medium show for you. Today, I'll be speaking with Kim Russo, the runaway best-selling author of The Happy Medium and Your Soul Purpose, who appeared in the A&E hit series Paranormal State and Psychic Kids, as well as Bio Channel Celebrity Ghost Stories and her own series, The Haunting Of. Today, I want to talk with her about messages from the other side, what they mean for us, what they're trying to say, and how we can even get guidance from loved ones who've passed on. So welcome back to the show, Kim. Are you ready to shine? Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> woo I, took, I took your line. <laughs> you stole it. You did it well. Perfect. When you get that next series, you run with it. <laughs> How are you, Michael? I'm doing well. Boy, do we have a story to share with you, Kim, and at least one person to introduce you to on camera in just a little bit. But... Before we dive right into things, in all seriousness, why are so many people dying today? Uh, you know, that's a question that has come up quite a bit lately. Um, and I believe personally, and my guides did confirm this for me, is that this is an exit point that it's a choice point for a lot of souls. And there are a lot of souls that uh, are choosing to not actually be able to help any longer on this side of the veil, but they know they can help more humanity on the other side of the veil. Uh, also, I'm not going to lie because the truth is a lot of souls uh, contracted and agreed that when this ascension period started, that they, they're out, you know, like I'll stay until... But some of this is be getting too difficult for some souls to stay in this density. Uh, but as you know, we're in the 3D density and it's, it's, we're right in the thick of just changing, uh, our vibrations. We're, we're headed to another, another shift higher. But it's not easy for so many souls to hold the vibration. Does it mean that those who are here, who are, who are apparently sticking around for a while, that out of all the known universes and the unknown universes, we chose to be here for this, I'll call it, I'll put it in quotes, party, hard as it may be, during this time of ascension? Absolutely. And the, the people that, that's probably one of the reasons my guides told me to write the book, Your Soul Purpose, because that actually came out two years prior to all of this, uh, whatever you want to call it, whirlwind and change. And so many people are remembering why they're here and they're stepping into their purpose. They're leaving their, their uh, corporate jobs, uh, things that don't fill their soul mission. And people are coming online like uh, the computers have to come online. People are coming back online to their souls and their memories. So yeah, we, we are remembering that we chose to be here now during this, I would say difficult, but yes. Oh, there's the rooster. Rue is in the background. He's, he's confirming what you're saying. I'm not sure if that actually gets through on the, on the, on the technical mic, but you can hear it. He, he, is a very emotionally sensitive. And so when you hit a truism or you hit something that is uh, unsettling for people, I believe he sees emotions. They're like emojis and he will sing accordingly. 
yeah, I, I took that as a validation right there. Um, so the truth is some people, sh everyone shows prior to coming here, and I did write about this in the book, Your Sole Purpose, that we do have choice points to exit. Uh, and so many are taking this, what I call a COVID portal. Uh, there was also a 9-11 portal where mass, uh, mass, a mass amount of souls, a, a group amount, have chosen to leave through this portal. Um, but only, usually, always, uh, when you think about the sole purpose, it's always for the highest good, right? Um, through a family member's death of COVID, we learned quite a bit about what happened to her what happened behind the scenes. Uh, there was a lot of mismanagement that is coming to light now and hopeful that it won't happen to other people once the word is out as far as what went wrong, what was not managed properly, uh, perhaps even what the agenda was. So we're, we're coming into awareness with so many uh, things that were hidden to the general public for, you know, how many years, Michael? So at least since the 1930s, at least. So, so let's look at this on the different levels here. Let's, let's take it as the collective level, or, or as I saying, the work that you're doing and I'm doing, there's no other way to put it. We're, we're helping free people from the matrix, free, free people from the density so that we're living one foot on both sides of the veil and we can see what's going on. I don't want to go into a state of darkness, but what is the, the changes that have been taking place or that we were stuck in since the 30s? How are we beginning to ascend and shift past them now? Well, like I said earlier, um, things that were taken from us, I'll give you an example. Why haven't the school, the education program taught us about our chakras, our energy centers, uh, how to connect to the divine, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call the divine, uh, and why haven't they taught us essential skills to survive outside of the matrix, how to grow our own food. So I believe the education system, if you want to go back to how we were programmed at a very early age, I believe they were only teaching us how to depend on the higher ups, the government to sustain life, to survive. We didn't learn these essential skills, especially how to go within. We were never taught the quiet time, the prayer time, even if it's just quiet time to go within. There was always a next, the bell, think about it, the bell would ring and you go, and you go to the next program, right? And just that together with even I talk about the black box, the television set, where a lot of latchkey kids back in the, in, in the day, single parents had I to go to- I wore my keys. <laughs> you did, did, were you one? Okay. But those children were, you know, their, their fr best friend was the television, uh, which is, as you know, tell live vision. Ooh, yes. All right. So- we get to wake up. We get to, this is a waypoint where people are shifting. Some people are going away. Other people, I believe, are waking up. You and I are in an interesting process. And, and I believe we're just microcosms for everybody else. A time of great change of where, literally, I have a GPS for my bicycle coming in today. I'm so excited for it because I'm playing out in the woods and I'll share more about where I am. But it's like we have a GPS that's an Etch-a-Sketch. And if anybody can remember the Etch-a-Sketch, the GPS is being shaken up and down and the sand is clearing the screen and all of a sudden a new GPS is appearing before us. What in the world is going on, Kim? That's a really good way to put it. Uh, GPS is, is actually how my guides, they keep telling me we're being rerouted. Many people in their personal lives and their professional lives and their, uh, you know, relationship 
lives, friends, co-workers, romantic relationships. People are not able to stay out of alignment with their own vibration. So have you ever gone to a party, Michael, I'm sure, where this point in time, the mundane conversations bore us to pieces? I personally am not interested of talking about the price of gas, the, the oh, the weather, and just all this mundane uh, fashion. And no, no offense, I like nice things. I like, I like to have nice things, but the conversation really has to be a little bit more stimulating these days. When you when you raise your vibration, you you tend to want to be with people of a similar vibration, if not higher. And people are craving that now. They're getting so restless in their spirits. And I see it every day with my readings and just people in my own life. Uh, people are, but the problem is people are still rooted in fear, fear of the, the unknown, right? How do I, if I leave my job, how will I pay my bills? Right. I think people have gotten so far away from their creativity. And and that is the key. Creating something new, allowing spirit to download it into your consciousness. We never do anything here alone. You know, on the daily, I get downloads, a.k.a. ideas. And they don't come from me. I can't believe I'm going to say this. And I agree with everything you're saying. And I also hear spirit talking to me. And I definitely would love you to channel and see what you can hear. Um, we are 2,000 plus shows in at this point. And I know you were commenting beforehand about how much you love our show. Um, when you talk about speaking with people of the same resonance or higher, when you talk about doing something that is uh, plugging into creativity. And to me, creativity and imagination did not come from us. <laughs> we're, we're, we're tuning forks, we're antennas. Um, I am being guided, and, and you talk about uh, the money will show up if you make that shift. I'm being guided to cut way back on the interviews. My last scheduled interview is the end of August. I don't know how many interviews I'm going to be doing after that, Kim. It is a time I, I just taught a 8,400-person uh, class. with, with it, was, it was beautiful on automatic writing. I have four books in the queue inside of me that spirit is trying to come out. And I'm being told, dear one, you get to shift and take that leap of faith. And I believe that's what we're all being told to do right now. <gasps> I have the chills. I have the chills. But that's I me. haven't mentioned that on air till today. This is, this is, so people are going to be listening. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Our live events are there. Our classes are going to grow. But I have to do what's most stimulating to my heart and my soul. And that's what everybody else needs to do at this point because that's a vibration. That's an energy. That's a higher frequency. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm so happy that I was able to get into you, one you of your... You squeaked in under the wire, Kim, <laughs> right <laughs> under the wire. I'm so grateful for that. And thank you for sharing that during our interview. I only, only want to speak with high vibration people, as high as me or higher. Here you are, Kim. Hello. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But it's not even about one person being better than another. It's not at all. It's it's this it's just similar what what do people have in common what frequency are you vibrating on those are the people that are going to be in the closest resonance with each other and so many relationships are coming to an end or transforming because we just can't put up with either the drama any longer the dense the, pro, the, the some people don't want to change and they don't want help and do you ever notice you you give them a solution and they say yeah but you know my ear is always trained for the excuses the year yeah but so the yeah but means no i'm not i have no intention of changing but i do enjoy complaining 
And I do enjoy the audience while I'm complaining. It means the ego is entrenched. They haven't found a way. It's not that it's a bad ego or that that ego needs to you know, be dismembered or anything, but their little wounded inner child is running the show and they get something out of it. Okay, that is spot on, spot on. So right now, I think we're all children. We're all bringing up that inner child. We all have it. The other side always talks about it. And they do when they come through in in a session with me. They very often talk about their regrets. Do they have regrets? Absolutely. Because what they tell me is, if I were only able to see things as clear as I am now from this angle of where I am, I would have done things so differently, but I was wounded as a child and I carried that trauma with me and it followed through to each relationship and in, in my, my confidence level. So they talk about that all the time. Uh, but again, that's why they say earth is a school that we need to learn with blinders on. So I want to go into channeling in just a few minutes for for everybody here, and I've, I've got to introduce you to somebody. With that said, we teach a school of mystics where we help people firmly be one foot here uh, on this earth school, one foot on the other side of the veil, so they can live a different way, they can look a different way. But what what is how do we live a life? Well, almost all of us, Kim, have somebody in childhood that we go, why didn't I ask that person out? Why didn't I speak with that person? Why didn't I? We, we all have that, that one person that it's the things we didn't do that we regret. From the other side, what are, what are spirits telling us to do? What are those who have crossed over telling us to do to live a different way now? The first thing they always say is don't live in the past. It cannot be changed. Do not go to the future. It does not exist. And to live in the present is all we really have, and it's never too late. You can have a 90-year-old person who acts like a child. We know this. Um, So the thing to do is stop putting labels. This is what they tell me. Stop putting labels on yourself. You are an eternal soul. So how many times have you heard uh, I'm, uh, that, that that ship has sailed? I'm too old for that. They won't want me. All of this negative thinking is you're putting a label on a timeline that literally does not exist. You're labeling and you're, you're putting a timeline on the physical body. But when people say to me, how old are you? I say I'm 12 because I think like a 12, right? I think like a 12 year old in the sense of always find the magic, always think in terms of there is no time. The soul is ageless and life is such an adventure. If you can see the beauty in it and, and challenge yourself, have the experiences that you want to have. It's not easy. Getting rid of the fear is the number one blockage. The spirit world does tell me that, is fear will paralyze you. But fear is nothing more than a a, a construct of the program of the matrix of what we were taught, even in our own families. Oh, no one in my family ever went to college, so I guess I won't either. Uh, People are afraid to step out of the family and change things. But this is changing now because the new souls that are being born, Michael, they're coming in with an upgraded DNA already. All right. Let's go there. Okay. Wow. When we last spoke. We were in an RV. We'd been full-timing around, exploring the world, putting ourselves in our own uncomfortable, fearful situations for uh, learning, for growth, and, and, and uh, experiencing all that we could, all that life had to offer. We had twins on board. And you said one twin would be healthier than the other twin. 
one twin would be larger than the other twin. One twin would be um, struggling with lung conditions and you couldn't be like out west where there was smoke and things like that, or she would have asthma. Um, do you know what's taken place since then? And how did you hear that? And what have you heard? I, I heard only through an email with your assistant that th there was one baby, one baby did make it. Um, that's all I know. You have one baby and it's a girl. Yeah. So what happened immediately after you spoke with us is we went into the doctor for our next visit and we were told you have twin to twin trans transfusion syndrome. One baby is getting the nutrients one isn't. And then we were told that there are problems with the placenta just a few days later, and that one baby's heart was pumping for both babies. And we literally had to make a choice. And we thought back to you very carefully. And thank God for our work on the other side of the veil. I don't know how we would have made it through. We literally had to make a choice in that moment to save one baby, or we might lose both of them. And so we have baby Hana. She is amazing. She had heart surgery right after birth because her heart was, in a sense, too strong for pumping for both. And so they had to open up a valve because there was so much muscle in her heart. And she may, and I certainly would love to know what you hear, may need another procedure as well as she continues to grow. But we were beyond blown away at what you had heard, and it did bring us a sense of peace um, when we had to make the decision that nobody, it's like the least, <laughs> if there was a decision you want people to make the least in life, it's choosing to let go of a child. Well, may I uh, tell you what I just heard? Anything, because we are, we are not heartbroken at this point, although there may be some tears. We are ecstatic for the baby we do have, and and would love to even communicate with our other baby if we can, but whatever. So I, I very rarely remember what I tell people because it, it filters in. It's not my information to, to retain. And I just kind of dump it out and leave it where it, it is. But one thing I do recall, and you'd have to go back to the videotape, is saying that even if one did not choose to have a live birth, that that twin would very much be involved and part of the family. I'm not sure if you recall that. Wow, that makes perfect sense. And I'm sure you did say that. Well, I that's only, the only thing I recall. Uh, but what I actually just heard was, you and your wife did not make a decision to let that baby go. It was a collaborative decision. The baby was very much involved in that decision. I believe that for sure. And I saw her. I, w I was able, I don't know if you call it a, uh, uh, not a near, a, 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 a shared death experience, but I saw her go up um, and I saw her ascend and I saw her go home. Um, and she then came through right away in my automatic writing, like minutes after that. Her name is Miraku, which means miracle. And she was the miracle that helped us get baby Hana with three miscarriages beforehand. She was the miracle that was necessary to bring us baby Hana. Um, she did it. And, and she's by my side. She wanted to have the experience of being in the womb. That's what she just told me. She wanted that experience. And she, she really was not ready to let her sister go just yet. They wanted to have this experience together. Uh, because they've been together for lifetimes. I feel they're one soul, really, like uh, those twin flame. I, I, I don't feel much of a difference between like one. I feel like one is the half of the other. We've heard this, that it's the same soul. I do. Feel, oh, you have. Okay. Then that's a, that is a great validation and confirmation. So it's, it's, it's like, I'm seeing like the butterfly just coming out of the cocoon, the caterpillar morphing. Uh, this baby, uh, Hannah has come in with some struggles starting out. 
I feel like you'll have two more surgeries. One is more involved than the other. They cannot do it until the heart is a certain size or the baby is a certain size. And the, the next two surgeries, one is regarding the heart, but one isn't. One is a tweaking of something else, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. But it seems very non-invasive. It's, it's maybe even an outpatient procedure type of a thing. Cool. With that said, we're talking about children choosing to come in at this time, new souls choosing, well, not new souls, but actually I would believe they're very old and wise souls choosing to come in and go, well, let's help clean this up. But would you like to meet baby Hannah? Yes, yes, I would. And, and she has never been on air for a show. Oh, okay. I'm putting my glasses on. So she is coming down now. Now, she was born as a premature baby, so she was less than five pounds. She is today nine weeks old, and she's more than doubled in size. This is a voracious eater and one heck of a child. So Jessica is just getting a new position with her here. And she has some pretty good lungs on her. <laughs> yeah, she has some really good pipes on her. Oh my gosh. Da -da 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 oh, I can't wait to see this is the moment. She might be hungry. I hear definitely she is hungry. I got her. Okay. <gasps> oh my goodness. What a beauty. Hi, baby Hannah. Hi, Mama. Oh, look at that smile. Hi, pretty girl. Welcome to the world. What were you thinking coming to this godforsaken planet? <laughs> yeah, you're going to make it better, aren't you? Yeah. Hi. Do you recognize me? Oh, she's a beauty. So here's, here's the thing. Before, before she was born, um, she, we saw lots of blue orbs around. And then after we lost Miraku, lost as a, after Miraku transitioned back, we saw more and more blue orbs around. And she was born, I don't know if you can see this, with a blue orb on her hand. She carries the uh, uh, mark of a blue orb. She's so special. And she's looking up. It's like... There's something, she's not take, taking her eyes off of something. No, she is very much, her eyes are continuously looking around at other things, particularly up typically toward my left, but she is always, she'll make eye contact. So it's not that she doesn't know we're there, but there are other things that are clearly of much greater interest to her. That's right. And she's, I could sense she's interacting with whatever this is. Because she's smiling as she's looking. Ah, oh, well, it's probably her sister, no doubt. You know, and she's happy. I think she's going to love being in front of the camera. <laughs> I, I have a suspicion you're right. And we always check in and ask. So we checked in and asked because we haven't brought her on air. Um, because we don't want to make her the Truman Show. Far from it. Um, but we checked in and asked. And both of us separately, Jessica and I, got the same answer that she wanted to be on the show today because she's never been on air like this. And we're like, really? And, and we got a big yes. So I, I'm honored for that as well. And this is, this is the, I love to see the manifest of what I saw prior to coming, you know, into this dimension. I love to see, and she, she's, she's a fighter. I could see that. She, she's, she's a fighter. Oh my goodness. She is both very peaceful and very centered and incredibly fierce. There's no other word to put it. When she wants food, it's, it's not like just a hungry baby. She's doubled in size in two months. When she wants it, it is go time. On the other hand, she has absolutely no fear at all. I can, you know, fly her around in the house almost throw her up in the air for backflip, so to speak. Don't worry, everybody. I don't really do that. But she's like, she's like, yeah, yawn more again. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take a lot to uh, 
keep her interested, but I, I, she, she's going to be loving on the rooster. You, and you have how many cats? Uh, three cats, and and yeah, she's she's not really bothered except when she wants to sleep by the rooster. I have a feeling she'll be chasing him around over time. She's animals. She's an animal lover, or they'll be drawn to her. It's it's her her vibration. Well, she was ra- wearing a rainbow outfit. That seems to be her favorite outfit. She was wearing a rainbow outlet outfit for yesterday sh- when we were trying to record yesterday, and I think for this morning as well. But to keep a baby in clean clothes very long. That's a unique challenge. So you said you see rainbows around her? Yes, I do. I did. I see rainbow colors, like a whole rainbow shape. I mean, she might be a rainbow soul too, but just the spectrum of light is all around her. Hi. Hi, Mommy. We keep getting different animals around. Um, Fox seems to be number one. Last night when I went outside, there was a skunk waiting at the front door. I didn't even tell Jessica that, that it's good that I moved slowly. Um, lots and lots of deer seem to be around her. Um, it's been, and, and, and when we first showed up at this house, and that's a whole other story, Bunny was there waiting for us. Yeah, there's a lot of animals. So I don't know what that's about. She's just connected. Maybe she lived in the animal kingdom. She was probably very uh, active there on the other side. You'll see. You'll see. Why are spirits choosing to come through at this time? So she came is coming through at this time, and I'm convinced is an upgrade beyond an upgrade beyond an upgrade. She is. I am not holding a baby in my hands. I am holding an elder and helping the elder get back to her power status, one, meaning learn how to work her limbs, learn how to work in this environment, this civilization, and then she's just going to rock it. That's, she has a soul path and journey with no pressure far greater than anything we could imagine. That's that's absolutely correct. Uh, they're coming here to save the planet and to save humanity. That's exactly why they're coming here. And they are the bravest of souls. So they will be, yes, and they will be changing. They'll, they'll be changing everything about society. Uh, and they are the, um, of the mindset of not of the me, but of the we. They are of that mindset. So they know how to work together in, u- in unison. Uh, by the time she's a bit older, we will be our own farmers. We'll be living in our own communities, sharing goods with each other, going back to basics, doing natural healing with sound. We're doing that now already. Uh, and I do get a very intense healing energy around around her because she – think about all the healing that happened in the womb. She she had to fight to survive. Um, and, the, and then your other miracle gave the ultimate sacrifice so that she can be here. Hannah could be here. So that was the ultimate sacrifice. But she'll be hoping from the other side, Miraku, no doubt about it. So, Can you connect with Miraku and see what she has to share here today? And, and we, we couldn't agree with you more. We keep making decisions on, on what, what we buy and everything we do based on, um, will Hana be happy with us later on? <laughs> because she's going to have a lot to say about all of this. And she is... I mean, why am I winding down the shows? Because I know it's no longer in alignment. There is something even greater in alignment. And I know that she will not stand for things being out of alignment in our lives, or she will enforce that we bring them back into alignment. Uh, she already is. Yep. It's true. And what she, but, but Jessica is tough. I'm getting like, she, they're going to butt heads a little bit. But it has to be that way because Jessica is the earthly mother that needs to keep her grounded and rooted in this dimension. So that that's the perfect mom. And and you're 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 also uh, what I like about what I see is how you will be the communicator in um, making it a family decision, like what you just said, but not just her decision. It has to be a family decision. Uh, and she she will rule the roost, as they say. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> 
we're, we're and, and I definitely still would love to hear if Miracle has things to say. We're right now we're in this amazing home. It's it's just absolutely gorgeous, and it took several steps to get here. And we're here for a few months. We get to circle the airport, uh, which is the hospital in Philly, to see if she needs more surgery. So we've been trying to get to New England, and Universe has not allowed us yet. But we do want to eventually, as a team, get back to the mountains, just not out west with the smoke and stuff right now. Um, and I wonder if you hear anything about that. We're, we're, it seems to be a group team decision of following where the heart is pulling us. Uh, so they brought me a little bit south where mountains are, perhaps the Smoky Mountain region. Uh, that per, is that North Carolina? I'm, I'm thinking, is that where the Smoky Mountains are? Um, Blue, Blue Ridge, Smokies, Tennessee. Tennessee is Smokies, I believe. Okay. In that region, because again, they're bringing you more south. Not, not necessarily like to the Dakotas. I don't see that. I'm seeing a little bit south, but higher ground for sure. Um, so the baby just told me that she helped you get this location. It was a fluke that you actually were able to get this, something fell through for someone else, or the way it came to you was a little bit unusual. Uh, there's like a backstory and she's laughing. Well, we ended up, we ended up at another house for a week and it turns out they had uh, a water heater that had a bacterial infection. Think about this. The water here, heater was producing sulfuric water and it's it smelled horrible we couldn't use the hot water at all and so we got we got out within a week we were supposed to be there and this place magically appeared on a, a moment's notice so we weren't supposed to be here but this place was yeah how it appeared who knows well it was someone else was renting it and that fell through that's what what i'm seeing so so whatever happened in that other family's life was allowing you to come and give you the opening for this place. They told me you could extend this if you choose to, this lease or however you're doing it. It's interesting. I just reached out to, to the owners today and said uh, we would potentially be interested in extending it. If so, what would that look like? Or, or would that be a possibility? It is because she just, your daughter just told me. I do see a bit of an extension. I absolutely do. Uh, so she, she likes the, um, because she's giving me a tour of the outside and, um, not sure if there's like something about the property line she keeps talking about. And I'm not sure if you were looking to put some Something about if you stay there or you did already erect a temporary fence of some sort. I don't know what she's trying to say. She's showing me a barrier. Interesting. Well, she's she likes to stay on the deck and the deck does have a little bit of a fence around it. It seems to be her sweet spot is being out. We're surrounded by forest. There are houses around, but there's a lot of forest and she loves being outside and she, she loves being in that sacred space on that deck. Okay, but... I do see where uh, I, I do see some wild animals that you'll have to keep away from the home because of the rooster. Yeah, we keep him in, but there is a fox that does come here, and fox seems to be in in our field right now. But we wouldn't put Rue down for more than a moment because of the fox. Okay, good. So maybe that's the like I see like it being fenced. But I need a blockade from this wild animal that can <clears throat> potentially harm Rue. So, so just be be more aware of that. That's what I see. Not even deer. Deer it won't harm. It's uh, either the raccoons or the foxes, of course. But that that's just a little bit. I feel like she keeps watch, and she does love it out there. And Something about, um, I don't, I, is Jessica sleeping on the couch? Mm -mm. 
Uh, well, during daytime, if, if we can catch, we don't get much sleep, Kim. In fact, we'd love to learn how we can. Um, we are both very much um, glowing in our sleep-deprived nature. But <laughs> that, That's literally what she shows me. I see her on the couch laying with the baby next to her on the couch. Uh, well, I think maybe that could be a, a message of please take time for a nap. In other words, when the baby naps, like force yourself. Don't try to say, oh, let me just do the laundry now and force yourself to sleep because I don't want to get too technical, but there's something going on with Jessica's thyroid right now. That's what I'm being shown. I'm not sure if she's aware of it. Yeah, she had to start thyroid medication for the uh, pregnancy. Oh, it's still there. So it has to be still uh, sleep. In other words, it's connecting to her immune system. So, of course, that'll get more enhanced if she gets better sleep. But keep an eye on the thyroid. They're showing me your, your little one. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, potentially if you, were, if you were to go for another pregnancy, there will be the boy. So the boy is coming next. So that's, that's what we've been feeling. We've been wondering. That's what she showed me, her brother. If you choose to bring in another soul, because it's, it is your choice with uh, Jessica. We do, although <laughs> family is interesting. Family's like, do it now. And we're like, we're so <laughs> exhausted. <laughs> let's, let's, let's breathe into this for just a little bit. We are so, it's, it's both a physical exhaustion and and it's an emotional one. When, when you go down this road, it's, it's, um, it's a, such a blessing though. It's a blessing, but you've also been through what we here on earth would call a trauma. You've been through a trauma. Of course, turns, traumas do turn into blessings, but it's just happened all so quickly that I do agree. Take time to digest this. She fell asleep. Look at this little princess. Which means you have great energy, Kim, because I have never held her like this. First off, not facing me. And, and for her to pass out, uh, she's so energetically sensitive. She's out cold. That's so beautiful. She's dreaming of the angels. So does Miraku have a message from the other side? And actually, let's do two things. Does Miraku have a message for us? And what does spirit, what is the message from spirit from the other side for us right now? Because it's really a fasten your seatbelt time. Okay. Let me, let me get... I'll see which one comes first. But she was so eager to show me her brother. Uh, I guess to show you, I didn't know. Miraku or, or Hana to show us? No, Miraku was on the other side showing her brother that ha like he's waiting in line. Should you choose? I, I should say when you choose. Yes, when. It's a when. Right. And that's okay. I feel like I don't feel any urgency, honestly. Even if it's a year, that's uh, in the midst of timelines. That's that's a drop in the bucket. So, she, But they play quite a bit on the other side. She she does interfere sometimes with your electronics. That's what she told me. Not on purpose. Just the energy interferes. Interesting, because all the electronics this summer, and and we experienced just a little bit of that sort of with the minor Skype difficulties yesterday. I've had cameras blow up. I've had everything go this summer. As I've seen it, as a as a sign that it's time to wind wind down this heavy electronics interviews all the time mode and step back from it. I've watched the electronics uh, be funny, to say the least. I think it is a twofold thing because you would, you would not feel right about stepping back if that were not uh, what you were being told. But I also feel that she, her energy is so strong that it just interferes with the electronics, creating sta static, creating blowouts and what have you. So she wanted me to let you know, like, I'm sorry, but she told, she, she said th th they want me around. So either you call upon her or you involve her in your prayers. Every day in automatic writing, she, she comes through and, and, you know, I write to all the angels and guides and she's like, daddy, I'll answer for all of them. Don't even worry about it. I got you covered. And so I talk to her each day. Yes, she said you bring her in. So when you think of her, uh, include her, it, it brings her right to your space. Uh, not that she would be far anyway, because she won't leave 
Hannah. They had this agreement already uh, that <laughs> they're both going to be parenting you both. Oh, wow. I can see it. can see it. Is there such a thing? Oh, go ahead. No, I think it's because of the upgrades and understanding the world we're coming into and giving you, teaching you. So, so they're both your biggest teachers. Children are anyway to their parents. I'll say that. But uh, they're like a tag team, and that's how it's going to stay. And please do not be shocked if when Hannah starts talking that she will be talking all about her sister and remembering a lot of situations. It's going to – that, I think, will be a book. I feel so clear, clear memory. We will encourage her. Obviously, we're so far down the rabbit hole. Encourage her. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you remember? Um, rather than to cut off, at least consciously, any of what she is experiencing that we would normally say, oh, that's just your imagination. No, she came in with a, a keen memory. So a soul memory. Th there's no veil really there for her. There's no veil. So she'll, she'll be speaking quite a bit about who she remembers, who, who was on the other side, perhaps her last life. I don't think she's lived many lives here on earth, Hannah. I don't. I do not. I feel like she came from a whole nother galaxy or planet that uh, didn't need words to speak. It was a very mental telepathy. And um, I, I feel very highly evolved, very highly. And that blue was probably the Octorians. Interesting. Does she have a soul mission that you can hear? Well, first, when I saw her initially, I said, gee, she could lead a country. <laughs> The soul mission is all about healing and vibrational healing. Um, so how I see it is her getting deep into the core of a person's, because as we go, we're not all going to be healed or, off the bat. And many of us that are going into the 5D, we are going in unhealed. So I do feel that she will be... Um, in her presence, her presence alone is pure light. Now, all babies are, but I'm seeing her as more of a young adult, and it's just pure light, but she's very tough. She won't take any nonsense uh, because she's all about, we. let's get this done now. Do you mind me asking, uh, what, what is her sign? When was her birthday? Uh, May 6, 2022. So... Um... Taurus. Taurus, yeah. Hey, Taurus? Yep. <laughs> Thick-headed. <laughs> that you, you don't know her rising or her moon? Did you do her chart or you didn't do it? I have not. Uh, we have had her chart done. I don't recall. Um, I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head any, any of the goodness from her chart. Okay. Because I feel like it's a very evolved chart. I see a lot of Pisces in her chart, which... You can check that out and get back to me. Um, so her moon might be in Pisces or she might have a lot of planets in Pisces, which is really a, a, a very, very psychic sign. Uh, I feel like it's not far from where mine is, the eighth or the ninth house. So it looks like she'll be dealing with a lot of, um, when I say underworld, it's not underworld. It's more under the surface energy. So not what... Not what the eyes can see. She feels to me like a, uh, what would be the word for it? Like how can I put this in the most loving manner possible? A wrecking ball of the old. That she is here to dissolve the old, to get the old out of the way. I'm going to cry now, so I'm hitting a truth that she is not going to stand for any of that and help bring in that new. And she's not doing it alone. She will meet her soul group. There, There's many of them that came in at the same time as her. Like, almost like, okay, you go there, I go there. I'll go to Pennsylvania. You go to Hawaii. You go here. And then I see her coming together with her soul group when it's time for her mission. Um, she, she just, in her presence, is going to teach a lot. Um, I do see her with a, an advanced vocal 
uh, vocal cords. So she'll, she might have a, uh, some ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication, Gemini or Virgo in her chart, a lot like highlighted because she'll be speaking too as well. She'll, she has a lot to say. Um, I feel like if you do choose to bring in this, the boy, he feels like such a gentle soul. So like calm and empathetic and compassionate and just feels everything to the core. She could feel it, but she won't let it affect her. If that makes sense. So it's good that she's coming first so that I can be trained even better to have my emotions uh, so that my energy, and maybe that's a better way to put it, is even more under control so that it doesn't bleed over into a, a even more sensitive child. Because I have big energy. You do. What is the spirit world trying to tell everybody? What is the big picture message for all of us at this time? Oh, wow. I heard it right away. Right away. Just be. Just be. Like, in just be whatever in the moment. Don't go too far out. Don't be present. Just be. It's the same. It, it, one in the same. That's from the guides. The, 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 the miracle. Let me listen. I want to get it from her. I, I'll tell you what I heard. I heard one big happy family. That's what I heard. Um, I see this rag doll that I almost wanted to say it's Raggedy Ann, but I don't feel it's Raggedy Ann, but it's a rag kind of a doll. I have no idea where that plays in. I, I sleep with, because we called in twins, I sleep with two twin rag doll girls. Those are like my teddy bears. I do. One is Hana and one is Miraku. Oh, absolutely. They are set it on air. <laughs> oh, wow. She's calling. She's exposing you. <laughs> the, but that is so specific, like in knowing, like they, they are not Raggedy Ann, but like that. They look like that. Yeah, they're kind of a Japanese ragdoll, uh, big eyes. Are they... Not identical dolls, though. Correct. They, they're identical uh, faces, so to speak, with different freckles. But one of them is uh, has a green outfit on with different ears. And the other one is a purple outfit with, the, of course, different ears. So they're very similar. I think Jessica is going and running to get them. She's, we're, we're, we're outing me here. Oh, my God. Hold on. I would love to see this. I because... have no idea how... She said it. She wanted you to know. She knows about them. So here is, is one oh. of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a rag doll, all right. So oh, and this, this is representing that. Hana here. So, and this is representing Miraku. Absolutely. Oh, and yeah, you can tell the difference. The hair is even different. And so these, these are who I sleep with each night. <laughs> That's unbelievable. So she wanted me to let you know. She, I mean, listen, how's that for a message? Wow. So Miracle was mentioning them. <laughs> That's very specific. That's very, very, very specific. Well, I think she's right in the bed with you, and that's why she's seeing it. She's right in the bed with us. She's why she knows about it and showing it to me. Was the plan all along for Miracle not to come through? And the reason she already said it, I just wanted to experience being in the womb. And I, she was not ready to leave her sister. Because think about it, it they're one in the same. So it's, it, there's going to be this sense of loneliness for Hannah unless she learns how to tap into the energy of miracle, which I feel she already does. I just hope she doesn't lose that but the fact like Kim said that but the guides just reminded me she will have a clear memory remember they said that and I think that's part of the the agreement like what if I forget you no you won't forget me because you'll we'll make sure that that's that memory will be there intact 
So she'll probably talk quite a bit about her sister. I wouldn't be surprised if she's next to us talking to her sister and turns, because right now that's what she'll look at me. And then she's up like this and she's not staring into nothing. You can tell because she'll look, it, it, whatever it is, it will move around and she will follow it. Yeah. Yeah. No, she is now for sure. But you know how our memory tends to kind of go after the age of eight, nine, then we start getting indoctrinated into the program of the matrix. Well, I don't see that happening with her because her, her vibration is already living in the heart space. So she's not in the lower dense chakras. She didn't come in that way. She came in from pure love from, and it will continue. This is her soul mission, spreading love, sharing love, teaching love, uh, and healing. Healing is big. And she'll have her own story to tell because it didn't start off, you know, she wasn't handed this life on a silver platter. She had to fight for it. Two weeks in the NICU, right away, plugged in, I think I counted at least 14 or 15 cords and attachments and everything, and she was working to stay here. So the uh, miracle just told me that uh, Hannah was a, a big hit with the nurses, so now all babies are, please, I, you know, I get that. But there was a lot of chit chat about your baby. Um, I don't know if it, she held her head up right away or she was, she just made them smile. Don't know why. Maybe you know why. The language that they used, we assumed they used for everyone because they talked about how special she was and how amazing she was and 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 you go, well, you probably say that about every baby and every parent wants to hear that. Um, and you want every parent to hear that. Yeah, but for some reason, I don't feel <laughs> that every parent heard that. They were just doing their job with a lot of these babies. Um, but maybe it was that she never cried or she was... She didn't. There was alarms going off and code reds and blues and you name it and... She was like a little Buddha. Okay, there you go. They, 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 in other words, they've never seen this type of behavior on a baby. So she made a, a spectacular, she made an impression. That's what Miraku told me. So she's proud of her sister already. They, they're one and the same. Again, oh boy, those rag dolls, I'll, I'll never forget that one, Michael. <laughs> it's kind of cool, isn't it? Anything else that people get to know right now during this time to help? Because, well, it's it's sort of, okay, go. Forgive, let go, forgive, let go. Surrender, let go of the control, let go of the, what you're harboring as, uh, you know, bitterness, anger. Let it go, release it so that you can fly, so that you can be lighter in your light body. The, you forgive, forgive does not mean forgive the actions, but just forgive yourself. And self-love is a very big theme right now. Like give yourself a hug, a pat on the back. Um, treat yourself as if you would, how you would treat a child or a baby. So they need a lot of tender, loving care. They need understanding. They need nurturing. We have to nurture our inner child right now. We all have one. And I know where my, um, where when I go back into my childhood, I was very shy. I was very, um, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I felt like I was in the background a lot in, in my family. And I have to now go in and get that little child and say, no, no, come to the front, come to the front. So we all have to do that. I don't care how old we are. Is there anything that we want to um, be wary of? Sort of, I, my mind goes to Groundhog Day and the guy who just keeps on stepping in the pothole. Are there any, ooh, that's a doozy. Are there any potholes that we get to watch for as, as uh, individuals and a collective right now? Yes. Well, this is, I'm, um, uh, what has helped me, I feel, is a big message for everyone else. 
What my guides keep reminding me to do is to stay on the higher timeline. Now, there's several timelines playing out right now, realities. So you get the, the doomsday reality and you get the age of Aquarius reality where we're all going to live in harmony and we're going to not have any, any uh, you know, not going to be part of the monetary fiat system anymore and we're going to be living um, the way God intended us to live without having to pay to live on this planet, right? So who gave any man an authority to charge to live on this planet, to charge us for water or land? So we have that timeline, which is very, very specific. And then we have the timeline of potential nuclear attack, war, famine, um, inflation. So we have two timelines running, two major ones. Stay on the higher timeline. So when a friend of mine wants to talk about all the doomsday stuff, I say, no, that's not the timeline I'm on. So I read something somewhere that was pretty funny where someone said, well, how much is gas on your timeline, Kim? <laughs> I even thought that was hysterical. But, but then I will counteract that thought with, I am very abundant. I will have what I need to pay for these gas prices. So stay on the higher timeline in your thinking. Thoughts create reality. Is that literally changing the vibration of the planet because you're playing a higher level chord? Yes, because the more people collectively who stay on the higher timeline, that is the reality that will manifest for the greater good for humanity. So we, this is what we are doing right now, Michael, as light workers. We are trying to teach everyone, do not go into those old programs of fear and control and density. That's just what they wanted us to think. They never really wanted us to know how powerful we are as souls, as spirits, as co-creators, the list goes on and on, but we're learning about our power. We're learning that we are one with the divine and we're not separate on any levels. And if we could just let the earthly constructs such as religion, education, politics, just put them to the side and just see everyone as one race, the human race, that's when things are really going to start changing. She was perfectly asleep as you were speaking. Mama walked by. Her eyes were completely closed. You can go back to the video and watch this. Mama walked by with milk, with baby Hannah's eyes closed, with her asleep. She started moving her hands, and then a minute later said, I need to go get the milk. She is, as far as I can tell, it, Jessica even more than me, can't come into a room without her knowing that she is there. She is like hovering above and below at the same time, watching the situation, even when you think it's a baby asleep. She could sense the vibration. She's, she's multi-sensory already. So I, we're, we're all born that way. I mean, she has an upgraded DNA for sure. Uh, but we're, we're actually taught to suppress all of those senses at, at, at a young age, right? And so, like, if a child sees an entity or a silhouette of a spirit in their room, the first, well, back then, maybe not now, there's so much more awareness, but back, back in the day, parents would say, oh, honey, ghosts are not real. Go back to sleep. And you're just having a nightmare, you know? So we're, we're taught that, no, no, that's not real. But we know it's real. We know what we see. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy that you'll be raising Hannah just to enhance what she already has. And it'll only make everything better for you guys. Thank you. A couple last questions. Then maybe if, if you're good for it, we'll dive into a brief meditation and I can even bring out Rue for a minute, who is, is really saying, get me on camera. What about me, daddy? 
I think so. He's making noise. Yes. What? Um, well, he he is incredibly energetically sensitive. In fact, maybe you can tap in on the other side and help us with this. So so this this would be the last on the other side request. He is very energetically sensitive when Hannah starts to cry. And 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 he believes Hannah is his. When Hannah starts to cry, he will start crowing or singing and he won't sing. He does not have the um ability to stand down the song for quite a while afterwards once the baby is okay. He doesn't know how to talk himself back down. And so she'll start crying, having a need. He'll start screaming to us, baby has a need. She'll come down and he's still wired for a bit going, take care of the baby. But the baby has been taken care of. Take care of the baby. Yeah. I, I, I think it's like a ADHD of a rooster. He does. He does. He has a very excitable energy. He's very empathetic. Um, I, I don't, I, I feel like it will help if you show the rooster, maybe you do, but I feel like sometimes the rooster's not in the same room as the baby. So like put the baby right under the rooster's nose at that moment to bring him down. Okay. Can Does that do. make sense? Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't feel the rooster will, will hurt the baby, but it's more like, let the energy of, of Hana come close to Rue. And then that'll like, like her energy will calm him because that's the effect she's going to have on many people going forward. That's her, her mission. She came here for that. Thank you. So you, you are on this personal transformation right now. You are, there may be a show or show in the works. You're being pulled to the side. Your GPS is rerouting. What are you going through right now? And where do you want to send people to find your work? Oh, so I am, I, I slowed down quite a bit because I moved two times and I have one more move. It's a long story but I'm trying to get settled in a home. I'm a cancer rising for anyone out there who knows astrology. Uh, people with cancer, a, a prominent cancer placement, we need to be settled and our home comes first, our home and our family. So that's what's happening now for the last two years, believe it or not. I have moved permanently to Florida. Uh, I am very accessible through Zoom with group readings, teachings, teaching class. Um, I am putting together a class now that I don't like it to be overwhelmingly big. So I have people that when they send me an email request, I put them on a list and I limit my classes to about 20 to 25 people because I'm very interactive with the uh, students. Uh, anyone can find me on every every social media platform, but KimTheHappyMedium.com is my website. I do have an online store where my guides wanted me to start touching crystals and using crystals, and uh, they told me to open this store to help others, and I do bless each piece of uh, jewelry or crystals that do leave here. I pack everything myself. I, um, I look at it like a, a candy store. I love it. It's keeping me ground, grounded and balanced right now because I get to touch them every day. It's interesting. It's a question that I was was going to ask, and then we stepped away in a different direction. When you talked about Miraku blowing up electronics, um, I was called to ask, and then I didn't. So I'm, I, now I know why I was called to ask. Are there any crystals that we can get, should get, would be good to get to kind of diffuse that overabundance of energy coming in from Miraku at this point? Well, yeah, I have black tourmaline pyramids and black obsidian pyramids all around my Wi-Fi, my routers, uh, it neutralizes, it neutralizes the static electricity, the Wi-Fi. 
uh, and it absorbs. So any of the darker crystals can do that. Um, my favorite is black tourmaline, honestly, and black obsidian is wonderful as well. And it does really bring down and absorb, uh, not only negative fields or vibrations, but harmful ones. Black, black obsidian is what I use, used, uh, until these two moves as my stone that I carry, a, I hold a grounding stone during an interview. I go, I send love, I send love, I send love, but that's been grounding for me. So much disappeared when you do two moves in eight days or seven days, you don't know where, even one move, you don't know where anything is. Then you move a second time, forget about it. And so I went to the local crystal shop and got a black merlinite stone, which is my grounding stone. I never heard of merlinite before as my grounding stone at the moment. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So you said amethyst mask. We should look into an amethyst mat. Well, I haven't had one personally, but I, I'm hearing really good things about them. Help you sleep, help ground you, uh, keeps keeps the, the right frequencies when you sleep. And, uh, you know, that's a problem for so many people these days is sleeping. Yeah, we just don't get it. <laughs> I laugh because I'm like, oh, it's a it's a level of total surrender of, of what else can I do? Um, well, I hate to break it to you, but since I had my first child 33 years ago, I've never slept good since. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. It's but there's more love, right? Isn't there more love, Kim? Yeah, it's worth it. It it it, it pans out in the end. It really is worth it. I have no, that's why I laugh. I have no complaints, none at all. I have a miracle baby. I have a miracle wifey rooster kitties, but I mean, we've got Hana here. And so, you know, in the middle of the night, I struggle for whatever reason, I have a hard time getting back literally into my body. And so Jessica will be like, I need you to go and warm something up right now. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> trying. And then I'll go down and I'll, and I'll warm up the breast milk, you know, from pumping or something, I'll, or the donor milk. I'll warm it up and I'll put my finger in it to make sure it's the right temperature. I'm not in my body yet. Oh. I, I couldn't tell you if it's 33 degrees or if it's scalding. I'm not home. Oh my gosh, Michael. All right, we have to throw some cold water on your face. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, any, any last words of wisdom? Then, then would you mind leading us in a brief meditation with Rue? You want me to lead you or you lead me? You, well, if, you, if you're good for a couple minutes, do you have any meditation you could do? I'm not really prepared for that. I'd rather you do it. All right. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll get Rue and I'll lead us in a meditation. How's that? Any last words of wisdom you wish to share? And do you know why I'm asking you that? challenging me, getting me out of my comfort zone because I need to do it because I'm starting a meditation channel on YouTube, which I am. Why? 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 Well, that might be the higher reason, but I need to, to go through them. I need the meditation. So, because I did not sleep well last night myself. We can do that then. Yes, and I'm challenging you as well. Not a problem. I well, I do it. I do a, a live live event every Monday night on YouTube, and I do a meditation then. I teach my class on Wednesdays, and uh, for our school of mystics, I do a meditation then. So I am game, which is interesting because if we go back seven years ago, when I would have guests do meditations, I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm 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 excited. You're going to give me a treat right now. Yes. All right. Any last words of wisdom you wish to share with people first? Ah, uh, just just live in the heart. That's it. Get rid of the root chakra. Rise from the root chakra. That's where all of the gunk is. Challenge yourself, people. I love you. I love everyone. Just every day, make it a good day, even if it's not. That that's really. It sounds easier than it is, but it is that simple. It is that simple. People make things hard. Um, just live in the heart, and that that's where you will be in the flow. That's when synchronicity happens. That's when the miracles come, miracle. Miracles happen when you live in the flow of surrender. Stop trying to control everything, people, because right now we have no control. And um, that's a reminder for me as well. Daily, I wake up and I surrender 
day after day after day. Spirit guide me, spirit lead me. I'm all yours for the highest good. Always. Right, Michael? Absolutely. And amen. Or put another way, I surrender. <laughs> I surrender. That's right, Dorothy. Surrender, Dorothy. All right. Let me go grab Rue. Hold on one second. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, wow. This this baby got big, too. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. I cannot believe... I never met anyone who has a, a pet rooster that's so much like a person. Oh, I think Rue wants this meditation as well. What do you think, Rue? I can't wait to see how he's going to react. Oh, you're such a good boy. You're it's such a good boy. It's beautiful. Thank you. See the earlobes there? They norm in the morning they're bright red with all his testosterone going. And when <laughs> he's calm and relaxed, like he's melting onto my shoulder right now, they turn white. Which means that he's very relaxed. Very relaxed. You both match with the red. <laughs> we do. All right. So for everyone, and particularly for Kim, then, let's sit up nice and good and relaxed. We can hear a baby perhaps cooing in the background. And I just want you to feel your feet on the earth for a minute. Yes, feel your feet on the earth like a rooster, taking your feet and curling your toes and feeling the ground beneath you. Take your butt muscles, your glutes, and kind of wiggle back and forward on the chair and get rooted or roosted into your chair. And then I want you to take, he's having a conversation with our baby, take a deep breath in through the nose all the way down to the tip of the tailbone and out through the nose. In and out. In and out. One more time. In and out. Now I'd like you to imagine, because we're all here together as one, that we're all in a giant circle of everybody watching this past, future, and present. We're all holding hands in this giant circle. And in the center of this circle is a fire pit. Because we're outside. We're surrounded by trees. We're surrounded by wildlife. In fact, you can feel behind you you're surrounded by angels and guides at this moment. They've got your back. In front of you is this beautiful fire pit. And in a, inside of it, this most amazing violet blue flame. This is the violet blue flame of Saint Germain. It's a healing flame. It's a flame of surrender. It's a flame of letting go. And what I'd like you to do with the power of the group, with the power of the angels and guides and elders and ancestors and loved ones who are at your back, is I'd like you to pull out from your heart anything that's troubling you, anything that's worrying you or anything that doesn't serve you. And I'd like you to throw it gently. Oh, okay, you can huck it if you want. Throw it into the violet blue flame of Saint Germain. Watch it be incinerated by the flame and it goes up and turns into giant, amazing, sparkling silver and gold speckles of stardust. You pull another worry out of your heart and you throw it into the flame and you see it incinerated and turn into stardust. And another worry. And 
and another. And now there's one big concern on your heart that you've pushed away, that you've pushed under the carpet, that is such a deep core wound that you've been afraid to address, to think about, or even allow yourself to feel about. And I want you to love yourself up. Pull that out from your heart and throw it into that violet blue flame to be healed and to let go. See that sparkle dust come out as it's transmuted, transformed, and released. You feel much lighter now. You feel freer. You feel calm, relaxed, and at peace. And I want you to know you can come back here anytime in this meditation or simply on your own. Come back to the circle. Come back to the campfire. Come back to the violet blue flame of St. Germain. And take whatever is on your heart and release it in this beautiful act of surrender for your highest good and the highest good of all. And so now when you're ready, I want you to take three more slow, deep breaths and then we'll come back in through the nose. Feel it going all the way down to your tailbone, rooting you in the earth and out, in, and out, in, and out. And when you're ready, <laughs> as Rue is now, feel free to come back. How you doing now, Kim? Thank you, Michael. That was wonderful. So, we've melted the roux. <laughs> and he's saying, I'm hungry now, Daddy. <laughs> I love his little noise he made, right? Like, on cue. Oh, absolutely. He's a pterodactyl or a T-Rex. He knows it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Wow. So when he's watching you now, because they don't look straight forward, watch with one eye or the other eye. So he was watching you. Really? He's looking. He's giving me the side eye. <laughs> that was so really, really relaxing. And uh, I needed that. I, I very rarely have someone to do that for me. So I'm glad and honored, honored, truly, to be able to do that with you today. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yay. And me as well, as me as well, Kim. So I'm so glad we hung in there for it with the, the Skype challenges and the Zoom challenges. This is perfect. Oh, Rue's nice and tall and proud now. <laughs> he wants to be front and center. Maybe he will conduct the next interview. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, well, and Rue at this point, apparently, <laughs> saying, be well, have fun. Ah. Oh. Breathe into all of this, surrender into all of this, allow the change to occur. Just be here now. <laughs> and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! What a beautiful interview with Kim. What a revealing interview. What an amazing words of wisdom for you, <laughs> for Rue, for all of us. Um, it's time. It's time for all of us to step forward, to all of us to step forward into the light, whether that's a school of mystics, whether that's learning automatic writing, <laughs> whether that's just singing to your heart's content. We need to do what we need to do 
that's in alignment with our higher purpose. On that note, of course, come on over to inspirenationuniversity.com to check out our... <laughs> thank you, Rue. Our School of Mystics. Here's a link to the next amazing video. Big thumbs up if you like this. Click the subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of all upcoming shows, live events, and premieres. Of course, with me and above and beyond all else, <laughs> shine bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this, Rue? How does it get any better than this? You're such a good boy.